Today's midseason 2 has the Battle for Olympus free for all mode and some balance changes. Here we go. Junker Queen is receiving some spicy buffs. First, her Adrenaline Rush passive now heals for the remaining wound damage when an enemy dies with wounds on them. Here's what happened in the old patch. At 225 HP, we only healed 100 HP before the targets died early. Now when an enemy dies, it'll heal you for the remaining amount of HP the wound would have healed immediately, as if it lasted the full duration. For the Carnage Axe Swing, the cooldown is now reduced by 2 seconds for each enemy hit. This ability is on an 8 second cooldown, so if you whiff, no change. Hit one enemy, it's now a 6 second cooldown, which is the most common occurrence. If you hit 4 enemies, well, you just reset the cooldown so you can swing again. For Jagged Blade, the direct hit impact damage was reduced from 80 to 50. However, the direct hit instead adds a 30 damage wound to the stuck target, and this can stack with wounds caused by the melee or returning Jagged Blade hits. Overall, I'd say these buffs bump Junker Queen's viability dramatically. She's much better upon eliminations, gaining instant flat HP from wounds. Think Genji resets, except it's her HP getting topped up. The Carnage Axe Wing is also an incredible buff to its uptime. It does a lot of damage at 90 flat with a 40 damage wound over 3 seconds. You generally won't be hitting multiple targets for the most part, like you won't be getting 3 or 4 people each time to reset the cooldown, and you'll actually be landing it on one target, like after pulling them in with the Jagged Blade. So in theory, it should always be on a 6 second cooldown instead of the default 8 seconds after hitting that one target. So that means it's a 25 increase in its overall uptime, again with the potential of even more. For the Jagged Blade change, it's tough to say whether it's a net buff or nerf depending on the context of the game. Like, the lower impact damage but increased bleed may help Junker Queen heal more over time, but there's potential the enemy gets it cleansed by Suzu or the enemy heals it up due to not dying from that weaker burst damage. But overall, I see Junker Queen's changes bringing her in line with some of the other tanks, but she may still have trouble against Roadhog, Orisa, or Zarya matchups. Roadhog, because, you know, he's stronger up close. Orisa, because Fortify, Armor, Spear, too strong. And Zarya's bubbles completely nullify the wounds. Speaking of Zarya, she's getting small buffs to her energy passive. First, the energy decay is reduced from 2.2 to 2 per second, and the delay before the decay kicks in is increased from 1 to 2 seconds. So you can see on the side-by-side, -side, previous patch, the decay happens earlier, and if we resync the footage to show what the decay per second looks like, it's not that significant. You'll lose like 22 energy instead of 20 energy over 10 seconds. It's not much. The biggest buff to Zarya is definitely the extra 1 second before the energy decay kicks in, because that's a 100% increase relatively speaking, because 1 second to 2 second, you doubled the time. When compared to the energy decay itself, that's a 10% change, right? Because 10% of 2.2 is 0.2. So overall, I've always thought that the Zarya nerfs after Season 1 were decent, and Zarya's been B tier ever since, and I think she still is B tier. However, Zarya has always been a great tank to pick against Junker Queen, who we saw get all these spicy buffs, so perhaps they did this to incentivize the return of Zarya to bubble off those Carnage Axe Wings and stop the bleeds and anti-heal effect from Junker Queen's ult. Brigitte got a tiny buff where her shield HP has increased from 250 to 300. I gotta say, this isn't a significant buff at all. However, lead hero designer Alec Dawson mentioned in a Twitter post back on December 6th that they have a new design for Briggs Ultimate being cooked up, but it does require additional resources like art and visual effects, so they're still figuring out the exact timeline for the change. Evidently, the timeline is not now, so hopefully soon, right? Brigitte sits near the bottom of most content creators hero tier lists, including mine, and shout out to reddit user Donler who combined a bunch of creators tier lists to average them out because you don't want to fixate on one person's list only, you want to take in multiple perspectives, but evidently when we look at the data here, the perception of Brig is pretty bad right now. I do want to say that I think Brig is fine in most of the metal ranks, and there's even a few one tricks that have made it to top 500 maining Brig. But with Junker Queen being picked more after these buffs, there's an argument to be made that you can play Lucio Brig Junker Queen again, aka Jotes as they called it in the Overwatch League in the pre-Kiriko era. I think this will be quite viable, especially if no one on your team feels comfortable on Kiriko. The Brig substitute for her can work as a strong alternative. 
Last, we have a small Moira buff where dealing damage with her damage orb now restores some of her healing juice. I think Moira is great in the metal ranks, and this buff will assist the average player with improved healing uptime because their resource management may not have been as refined. However, I see no change in Moira's playtime in the high level play. Moira is not that popular up here because I think a lot of players find her boring and one dimensional because her mechanical skill ceiling can be reached pretty quickly. There's not much aim required, and the only cool mechanical thing you can do is probably fade jumps. That being said, Mora does have great survivability and does output a ton of healing, and can be pesky when you go on the flank with the DPS Mora playstyle. That's right, but make sure you do it selectively. If you only DPS TikTok Mora, you're too one-dimensional and can be punished. You want to play both styles, defensive and DPS, depending on the context of each fight, and that's how you climb with her. The rank 1 support player right now is actually a Mora main, Nolan, who I had as my one Mora tip guest a year ago who explained a lot in this video. It's a bit outdated with it being Overwatch 1, but the same principles apply. There were also a ton of bug fixes, and I'm not going to read them all out loud to you, but I'm going to scroll down quickly so you can pause and read it. However, I will point out some of the more significant ones. Tracer was also not taking damage from her own Pulse Bomb if she stuck a target. This bug appeared randomly at the beginning of Season 2, and it's been about 4 weeks, but hey, at least it's fixed now. Under Mercy, it says that they fix Mercy's Guardian Angel, sometimes allowing her to escape Ramatra's Ravenous Vortex. Now, I had this footage where I filmed Mercy being able to fly through Ravenous Vortex no problem in the old patch, so I assumed that this bug fix would prevent her from flying out, so I tried it again on today's patch, and I feel like there's no difference, so I'm not actually sure what this means. If you guys have any idea, please leave it in the comments. Okay, now, so here are some stealth fixes that they added. The first thing they fixed that they didn't even document in the patch note was Hanzo's nauseating bow animation when firing. This bug randomly showed up at the beginning of Season 2, so it's been four weeks of pain for Hanzo mains, but no more. No more. So for Kiriko, in the past, if you swift stepped while under an effect like Anti-Nade or Dynamite from Ash, you would be able to cleanse it by just teleporting because your body technically phases out and back in, removing all those negative effects. As of today, it no longer works. This is a nerf to Kiriko's swift step. I don't know why they wouldn't document this. This is quite significant. That's it for the patch changes. I'm a little disappointed that there were no Roadhog or Orisa changes because I think those two are the most dominant tanks in the game right now. However, game director Aaron Keller did mention that today's balance patch is going to be lighter than usual because some of its planned changes were pulled forward in that mid-December hotfix patch. Also, a friendly reminder that the schedule changes to Roadhog are actually not part of today's patch and are slated for mid to late January, so at least they're coming, just not yet. Also, if you want to see an updated hero tier list for this mid-season patch, watch my second channel, The Car Q Archives, where I'll probably do it on stream and be a bit more candid over there, so check it out. 